Hello, gentle viewers. This is Avindian, welcoming you to the final episode of the Out of the Park Baseball Tutorial Series. So I was thinking the other day, what am I going to do on Friday? Am I going to start up the St. Louis Browns League again, or am I going to do one more video? And I had a couple of ideas kicking around in my head, but nothing was like, speaking to me. And no one's commented, at least as far as I know, and said, I definitely want a video on this. Then I saw the Miami Marlins trade Giancarlo Stanton. And I said, this is something I need to cover in a video. And I'm not covering it because I'm really good at this aspect of the game. In fact, I think I'm actually a little bit worse than average. But it's so important to talk about. And clearly, if you're listening, Derek Jeter, you should be taking notes on this video because you got almost nothing for Giancarlo Stanton and you had... Lots and lots of leverage. So, let's talk about trading an out-of-the-park baseball 18. Um, before we get into how to trade and how to get a good trade, the first question you should ask yourself of every single player, do I need to trade him? It is perfectly okay to sit down, evaluate a player, and say, you know what? I've got a nice long contract. He's fairly reasonably priced. I think he's a good player. I'm going to keep him. As much as I said it's better to trade a player a year early than a year late, it's also totally fine to not trade a player. If you're making offers and you're not getting what you consider fair value, don't make the trade. It's possible you might need to adjust your ideas of what fair value is, and I'll talk about that during the video. But it's just... It's so mind-numbingly dumb to see someone as bright as Derek Jeter, who knows baseball well, he's very, very good at it for a very, very long time, and he just sits there and he's like, I've got a player with a 10-year contract. I'm going to trade him for pennies on the dollar. And that's just dumb. Um, it is important to notice here, of course, there's this little disclaimer at the top of the screen. The contracts are not official contracts. Um, this is because the M the the baseball or excuse me, uh, MLB does not always release contract information. It's entirely up to the team to decide whether they want to release that information to the public or not. Um, tournaments, something added in OTP eighteen. I never tried yet. That might be a fun little mini series to do a World Baseball Classic. For some reason, it's WCV. But in any case. So the most important thing you need to do when you're deciding what to do about your team is decide what do I have that other people want? What do I have that I don't want to give up? And so right now this is again sorted by potential. And I know you're just seeing numbers inside of stars here. It's the same it's the same thing at the end of the day. When you're drafting, you cannot draft based on need. Because very few players go straight from the draft to the major leagues, and those that have are almost invariably pitchers. Generally relief pitchers. And so that's something you have to keep at the top of your mind. When you're drafting, it's good to draft for team needs, but it's better to draft the very best player you can get. Because you can always trade a player if he doesn't fit into your scheme. And maybe you can get something you do need, later on down the road. I hope that's clear. Um, so when you start with a new team, I like to sort by potential and figure out who am I going to build my team around and who is maybe not so good and I can get rid of them. Clearly, the Marlins have two building blocks, Giancarlo Stanton and Christian Yelich. Um, Yelich has a very team-friendly contract, you would be incredibly stupid to make this trade. Trading Christian Yelich, who is, if we look at his profile again, a pretty good hitter, good gap power, developing plate discipline, developing home run power, very good left fielder, good at stealing bases. If you look at a player like Christian Yelich and say, I want to trade him, you need to seriously reevaluate how you consider players. On the flip side, there's a 
there's a hidden cost to a player like Yelich who signed for a long time at a reasonable salary. He's going to be very popular in the trade market. I always like to say the most important stat when discussing team discussing who to trade and who not to trade, the most important stat is years of team control remaining. If you are doing the classic trade deadline deal, you're going to get pennies on the dollar. Because players are going to look at the player and say, I'm only going to get him for the rest of the season. If it's enough to put me over the playoffs, maybe it's worth it to me. But I'm probably not going to give up top quality talent. And so, it is almost always preferable um, to trade a player that's got a little more value to him. So Christian Yelich is, on the one hand, an obvious building block. And I would not look at a player like this knowing where Christian Yelich could be and trade him. Um, this is the kind of player that's very hard to replace. Maybe you feel differently, and you would get pretty good trade offers if you dangled someone like Christian Yelich. Because he is so cheap, and he is so good. I mean, this is a crazy friendly team contract. This is... This is brilliant financial understanding right here. And the best part is the 2022 season is a team option. He's only going to be 33. He might still have a few more years left, but then again, he might not. So this is a really good player. The kind you normally wouldn't want to trade 99% of the time, but someone that's also be very attractive. So I probably wouldn't trade Christian Yellen. I also probably would want to build around Giancarlo Stanton, even if his contract is not nearly as good. Uh, Stanton is unquestionably one of the very best players in Major League Baseball. Um, power like this does not grow on trees. And power tends to be the kind of skill that ages well. Um, so that's actually something we can talk about because that really brought up development a whole lot. I'm only going to talk about it for a little bit now. Um, but there are certain players we call old player skills, and there are certain skills we call young player skills for position players. Um, typically, as a player gets older, speed goes down, ages go down, discipline goes up. Power tends to stay roughly the same until it hits the cliff and just collapses. And so this means, as you're thinking about a player, you have to decide what they're really, really amazingly good at. Hitting home runs almost never goes out of style. Drawing walks almost never goes out of style. Um, you can look at a player like Giancarlo Stanton, except the fact he'll never hit 300, but he'll hit 25 to 30 home runs a year, or a year like this year, he hits more than 50. This is like another kind of player, but it's even more skewed in Stanton's favor that you build around. Especially when you hand him a contract like this one. He is making a lot of money. Now, the attractiveness to trading Stanton is this player opt-out. But also, the real-life John Carlos Stanton had a no-trade clause, which does affect things. Um... This means you really only have Stan for four years. But that doesn't mean you have no leverage. Stanton is such a good player. And he's got so much potential for just quality seasons in and out. And he's a fantastic defensive player. That again, the first the first response to any trade deal should be no. The second response would be, convince me. You have the leverage in a case like Stanton's. You decide, this is what I want. If you don't give it to me, at the end of the day, what am I left with? A pretty freaking awesome baseball player. The Marlins had leverage in the case of Stanton, and they did not use it. They talked themselves into the fact, saying, we have to cut payroll. If we don't cut payroll, we'll never be competitive. They got rid of Stanton. It was a phenomenally stupid idea, and they got really, really bad value for him. Um, I will tell you the kind of player I would consider trading. 
Kyle Baraclaw. This is not the kind of player you build a team around because he's a relief pitcher with a very obvious control problem. This doesn't mean he can't be a very good pitcher. It does mean that a player with a very very friendly contract at a position that it's very easy to find replacements for. Um, and this is a way to kind of exploit the AI. The AI oversells relief pitchers. But it's not even really an AI thing. It's actually a real life thing. Teams get obsessed with relief pitchers and it's silly. It's silly. Relief pitchers are typically not good year in and year out. It makes the pitchers like Mariano Rivera more incredible. But most relievers aren't that great. And he's got a gigantic bright red flashing warning flag in this control. A reliever can stomach bad control better than a starter can. But this is the kind of player that a lot of teams will look at very superficially and say, oh my god, I want this guy. And he's also the kind of player that even if you even if you can't instantly replace him with a player of his equivalent, it's not going to derail your season. Especially if you have other good relievers. And the Marlins have some pretty fine ones. So he's a good trade target. At a position people always want, that has a pretty obvious red flag, which means he may not be as useful to you as he first appears. If he's got a striked out to walk ratio like he did in the minors in 2016, that's pretty hot. 2015, not so much. And he's always had problems with walks too. And that is a very bad problem to have in a reliever. Not as bad as giving up home runs. And Bear Claw's awesome at preventing those. But walks are a bad problem for a relief pitcher to have. Okay, so we've we've targeted him as another trade target. Who else is someone worth trading? Okay, D. Gordon. D. Gordon is a player that has old player skills. Or young player skills, rather. Speed, hitting for contact. He doesn't have much plate discipline, and it won't get much better. He doesn't hit home runs, that won't get much better. And he's only a better than average second baseman. His contract is phenomenally stupid. I personally do not look at a player like D. Gordon and say, this is the kind of man I want to pay $10 million a year. I say, this is the kind of man that I trade. He's got his strengths, but consider the batting average is of all the offensive tools the one that carries over less, least from year to year. Um, because there's so much involved in whether a player hits for high average that may have absolutely nothing to do with that player's actual skill. Maybe it turns out that lots and lots of uh, fielders play badly when he's on the field. And you get a season like D. Gordon's 2015, he hits 333. This is a good player. Or maybe we get a 2016. And I suspect, if we take a look at one of my good old friends, Babip, hey, look, 383. An intelligent baseball fan or executive looks at this number and plays the little song from Sesame Street. One of these things isn't the same thing. One of these things just doesn't belong. 383 Babip is completely unsustainable, particularly for a player like D. Gordon, whose career average was 342. If you believe you were going to get 2015 again, you were silly. And that's what the Marlins were. The Marlins bit hard on a year that wasn't actually all that great, and now they're paying for it with a player that's not that great. D. Gordon is the kind of player where the team has very little leverage. He's not that good. The contract stinks. And you're going to have to count on the other guy making a mistake or vastly overvaluing D. Gordon. So those are a great example of the kinds of players. And you have to make a decision whenever you're going to trade a player. Is this a player I see being important for my future? If he's not, is he a player that's easy to replace? If he's not either of those two things, maybe I consider trading him. So let's talk about making a successful trade in 
uh, OOTP 18. And we'll start with D. Gordon, because he's going to be the harder one to move. Um, so first, we want to make sure before we trade D. Gordon, is he easily replaced? We don't have another good middle infielder on the team. You've got JT Riddle in AAA, and he doesn't play second. We've got Dalton Wheat. I know he's not an infielder. And so trading D. Gordon quickly becomes a little bit less attractive as we look through the farm system. Um, there are no above-average second basemen anywhere in the farm system, which means any trade we make would have to include a second baseman. Or we make Brian Anderson our second baseman, which isn't the worst idea I've ever heard of. Um, Anderson has struggled a bit at double A, but he's already 23. Uh, he has played second base in the past. He's a pretty decent defender, and his offensive tools are very, very solid across the board. He's not going to win many all-star game or many MVP awards, but he's going to play pretty solid. Um, so Brian W. Anderson could be a, a worthy D. Gordon replacement. But again, I'm not going to play with this season beyond this. This is just us identifying players we might want to trade and seeing what we can get. The easiest way to trade any player in OOTP 18 is to go to trade options and it shot player around. This will have the AI basically propose the player to every other team in the majors on a one-for-one -one deal. This is not the way to get the best value for a player, but it's a good way to test the market. You can shop three players every in-game day. And we're going to see what kind of options we get. And this will tell us roughly what we can expect and whether he's worth trading. Got to wait for it to make the stupid pictures. Usually I turn pictures off. I find them kind of boring. Okay. We are getting far better offers than I expected. We're not only getting people with existing major talent. We're getting really good prospects too. Um, by the way, if anyone from Out of the Park Developments is watching this video, please make this sortable. I don't like having to go through every single team. I'd rather just click on potential and see who the best is. Oswaldo Arcia, definitely a player we might want to consider. A young catcher. Teams can always use better catchers. So these are looking like some pretty solid deals. <laughs> And this convinces me, by the way, that we're making the right decision in trading D. Gordon. If we're actually getting this kind of package, even individually, these are very good players that we're getting. You could get an elite second base prospect like Andy Ibanez. Um, so let's take just a quick look at Ibanez. Andy Ibanez is every bit as good as second baseman, every bit as good at stealing, and a much more well wound route melt bleh, much more well rounded tool set. If he develops, he is better than D. Gordon. And he just have finished having a decent season at double A. Not fantastic, but pretty decent. Um, this is the kind of player you want to consider. You're getting younger and you're getting potentially better. And you've got to play with all his years of major league team control left. I don't know why Texas would make this deal unless Texas believes that D. Gordon is someone that would take them over the top. And it's very possible. But again, this is purely instructional. So let's assume we do want Andy Ibanez because we do. We click trade. This is a rare deal. I mean, look at our assistant GM. He says, I love this trade. But I think we can do better. You'll never know what you can get if you don't shoot for the bloody moon in every trade. I'm going to ask him to throw an Ariel Harado. I can tell you before I drag this name over, they're going to say no. But I'm curious to see how they react. Okay, you see, that's not a fair deal. You have to offer us some more. This means uh, you kind of get an idea of what these, these different phrases are to me, and it's the same ones all the time. They're saying this is a bad trade for us, and it is a bad trade for them. Um, now we can decide how badly do I actually want Ariel Harado. Ariel Harado is an extreme ground ball pitcher, which has value with the right defense, with good control, good movement, decent stuff, and a really good changeup, and good stamina. 
This is a very good pitcher. He's the kind of guy I'd like added to the deal, but he's not a deal breaker. Um, let's take a look at another player we might be interested in. Let's look at Marcus Mack. Marcus Mack profiles like a poor man's John Carlos Stanton. Um, we must have a weird um, scout because this scout is loving this guy. Four and a half stars and he's not a four and a half star prospect. He's good. He's not that good. And OSA thinks he's hot garbage. OSA thinks he'll never get power. Maybe Marcus Mack is a bad risk too. Um, but you have to do this with each additional player until you find something you're comfortable with dealing with. What about Drew Robinson? Drew Robinson would be a pretty good stop a stopgap at second base. He's ready for the bigs. I don't know why he's not playing in the bigs. We've just made the trade better. We've not only gotten a better second in the future, we've also gotten D. Gordon's replacement. Let's keep pushing. You always want to make sure that you're getting the best player you possibly can. Jose LeClaire. Jose LeClaire is a relief pitcher. But he's got four pitches, potential for good control, still a very good strikeout pitcher, um, and he's clearly mastered AAA. Well, you throw in LeClaire. Okay, this is when you know you've reached the perfect point in the trade. The GM isn't quite sure if he'll take the trade, which means he thinks he might be getting screwed, but he's not certain. This is such a brilliant decision. We're taking a player who we know is probably not going to age well with a contract that's not super team friendly and we're getting a good plug and play second baseman now who also has some right field chops so we decide we want to move him later on. We've got our second baseman of the future who just looks like he needs some seasoning in double A, maybe a little bit in triple A. Who, by the way, we can move to third base if we decide that's an area of weakness. And we're getting a top quality relief pitcher. All of these guys are young. This is a really great deal. So again, just to show you how to trade, we hit submit offer. And the AI is going to think about it. And we're going to sim forward about a week and we'll eventually get stopped. And it'll say, here's what I think of your deal. Ah, he has not actually decided yet. Ah, there must have just been one day left. Okay, we're getting a personal message. And the Rangers tell us, no, this isn't fair. Okay. So now we discuss the trade again. And we decide what to do next. So we can drop LeClaire and we've got a deal. That's a good deal. Or we add LeClaire and we give them something else. And this is where you get to blockbusters. We win this trade if we trade D. Gordon for the other two second basemen. And I don't think, I hope it's clear to you that, that it's a clear win. Even if we're like 10% worse in the short term, we're like 90% better in the long term. So what if we take the other player we identified as possibly flawed and Kyle Bearclaw and throw him in the deal? Now, all of a sudden, we're back to this is an amazing trade. So we look for another piece and see what it else it is that these players have that we might want. So maybe you don't believe in Ariel Harado. I kind of do. Let's see if they throw in Harado. Again, we've reached another point where the AI wants to think about it. I mean, I'm getting excited about this trade. This trade kind of makes me want to keep the Marlins just to see how well this works out for us. Um, we're getting rid of two of the players that were on our short list for players we weren't terribly concerned about. And we're getting a pretty good uh, thing. One quick note here. This graph is amazing. This tells you, roughly speaking, what your team is good at in starters, what your team is good at in prospects. Blue light is amazing. Green light is pretty good. Yellow light is some... Problems, right is no depth. And right now we know we need pitching because um, all the pitching lights are red. 
Um, so this would help us address this. And we're already pretty decent good at relievers now, and relievers are so easy to find. They're so easy to find. Okay, so we're going to take this deal, and we're going to say, gimme. And again, we're going to zip forward a bit. No, oh, the World Baseball Classic is turned. I don't know why it's called WCB. It should be WBC World Baseball Classic. Um, okay. Texas, once again, has said, mm, probably not. Here's a great place, I think, to throw in a new, another mechanic. The Make This Work Now deal. This button is fantastic. If you're pretty close to a deal and you're just like I want to make this trade what is it going to take and we can see there's a lot of players here that we probably don't want to give up um, we could maybe give up someone like a Thomas Jones so let's look at Thomas Jones and decide can we live with losing him good defensive center fielder well rounded offensive package if not maybe brilliant but decent Actually, uh, OSA loves him even more. With a very good speed. This is a very valuable player. But he's 19. Which means he's a long way away from the majors. Uh, and we've got pretty decent depth at center field. And a pretty good starting center fielder. I could live with that. Because this makes our pitching better. We could also look at a Braxton Garrett. But again, Braxton Garrett looks like he could be a decent one. And at a certain point, you need to decide what's enough for you. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I will drop LeClaire. Because I would rather have Gerardo than LeClaire. Even if we're not getting some replacement. So I'm actually going gonna, gonna to submit this offer and see if they take this. I genuinely don't care about the World Baseball Classic in terms of this. Again, we're just doing this to show you how trades work and, and how to get that great deal. Okay. And again, they keep sitting here and saying, no way. But we're getting a very different list here. <clears throat> and let's see if there's like maybe a marginal prospect like an Edward Cabrera. Cabrera is a very marginal starter. What if we threw in Cabrera? Both sides think this is a win. I think this is a win. There's very little not to like about this trade. I know we don't have a lot of depth and relief pitchers. I mean, we might even see if we could draw Barraclaw, but I'm pretty sure they'd tell us no. What if we decide we wanted to keep Barraclaw? What would we have to add? I like Adam Conley. Adam Conley's actually a pretty solid pitcher. I mean, it's about give and take. And, and again, I'm perfectly okay. I would be totally cool with this trade. Can I get you to slide in LeClaire? I'm going to try it. I bet they say no. At a certain point, you have to pull the trigger. Um, this is one of my greatest weaknesses. I will keep dickering like this for a long time. And in the preseason, it's not such a big deal. Um, yeah, I don't care. You know what? Do your thing, AI. I want to hear back about this trade. Is Texas going to take it? Look, I said set up everything. Text action might have already responded. <gasps> they took it. We found it. We found the perfect trade. <clears throat> we are taking a very flawed second baseman, a pretty good reliever who's also got some flaws, and a prospect so marginal that no one cares for two good second basemen, one who could play now, one who's a good one in the future, a desperately needed starting pitching prospect... And a pretty good relief prospect. Complete trade. And so now the trade is finished. 
Now, apparently, and I didn't check this, this is something to always consider, Kyle Baraclaw was secretly, like, the greatest player in Miami history. And they loved him. I don't care. There's a time and a place to care about fan interest. We won that trade. We won that trade hard. And that's all it takes. All it takes is using shop player and building your way up from there. Always try to get that extra player. Always figure out what you're comfortable with giving up and what you're not comfortable with giving up. And you can win trades. Now, it's important to keep in mind that there are trade settings, which I believe is under players. No. AI settings. Yes. Trading difficulty. Um, real life players actually, real life teams tend to favor prospects. Um, here it's just neutral again, but whatever. We won that trade. I don't care what you say. I don't care who you think you are. That was a big win. And all it took us was time. Now, sometimes I don't do this in my series because it's kind of dull. It's kind of dull watching me negotiate with teams over and over and over again. I also haven't had a player like D. Gordon to use as a trading chip. Um, one final thing. Always keep an eye on your salaries. Know who you're going to lose. Know who you're not going to re-sign. And be prepared to look for something to get. A.J. Ellis is a pretty okay backup catcher. Pretty okay backup catchers have value. But he doesn't have a new contract for next season. So the first step would be, I look at this player. Do I think he's going to continue to be profitable? He draws walks. He plays good defense. This is a good thing to have in a backup catcher. So, do I want to keep him? Uh, to quote the Magic 8 Ball, all signs point to maybe. So then we talked to him about an extension. And he wants to sign again for much less money. They won't let us do, us, do this, by the way, because um, we don't have any payroll flexibility. Because of Giancarlo Stanton. And because of all these uh, arbitration awards coming up. Um, if this is what the AI thinks he's going to get in arbitration, Marcelo Zuna, without question, deserves to be traded. Let someone else deal with this giant arbitration contract. I can save tons of money. So again, we'll start by shopping around. Move from loan, Dominican Republic. Oh, because of the World Baseball Classic. Right, right, right. So I just want to see what kind of return we could get if we did trade it. We probably won't get that greater return. Um, but I consider us a rebuilding team. And we're actually getting some fairly decent responses. Um, pretty good speed, pretty good outfielder, not much power. Get a, a prospect like Trey Mancini, who's, again, not fantastic. He's not as good as this looks. Uh, but we're getting offers, and we're getting good offers. And again, we have to think, do we want to play like Marzello Zuna or rather play like Jaime Candelario, who might be even better at a much harder-to-find position? Outfielders grow on trees. Good third basemen typically don't. Can we find strength in a position we're actually really bad at right now, like shortstop? Is someone offering an interesting shortstop? Probably not. Shortstops are very hard to find. We're getting bad shortstop offers. If that's what we wanted, we maybe don't trade Ozuna. Get another second baseman. Well, actually, he wouldn't be a bad shortstop. And again, it's all about what do you want to give up what do you not need? What do you need? Trading is the absolute key to success in Out of the Park Baseball 2018. I cannot stress that enough. If you inherit a great team like, let's say, the Red Sox, sure, you're going to look pretty good for a couple of years. But if you don't make those smart trades, your team's going to get worse and worse and worse. Never get attached to relievers. Never get attached to utility infielders. That's a curse of mine. 
I tend to love utility infielders. And it's silly because they're utility infielders and they're very easy, easily replaced. Um, take it next level. We'll find players, find teams that have recent injuries. They're going to be more likely what you want. Um, there's a couple of other things I'm going to show you that are tangentially related to trades that I don't mess with much, but maybe you will. Team needs. This lets you have other teams come to you. You say, I want a starting pitcher. At least 21, no more than 28. I don't care about the rest of this. You can tailor it to your park. I want a power pitcher. And I want a superstar. What will happen is different teams will come to you and say, I have this player. Do you want to trade for them? And even if they have no desire to trade a player, they'll still come to you and offer them to you just in case. I don't like using this very much. Um, I think it's a little bit flawed, and I'd like to see them improve it in OOTP 19. Because it's always like, the Dodgers are like, I have Clayton Kershaw. Would you be interested? Yes. What do you want for Clayton Kershaw? Everything. Well, that's not terribly helpful. Um, I hope they either improve the filter or fine-tune it or say, this is what I'm willing to give up. The alternate is the trading block. And you access this by picking any player you don't want, let's say Justin Bower, or Bauer, whatever his name is, and just set his status to on the block. And then he gets put on the trade block, and the AI is more likely to approach you for a trade with them. The AI will offer you trades, and some of those trades will be good ones. It's up to you to decide, again, what do I need? What can improve my team? How do I get what I want? That's it. Winning trades is about having the assets in the first place. If I didn't have D. Gordon, I couldn't have made that trade. And it's extremely clear. What happened? Where is... Oh, the stupid World Baseball Classic. Got it. Um, where did Christian Yelich go? He's not hurt, is he? XSC's extended spring training. I don't see him there. He must be he must be on loan. It's fine. Um but yeah, your important thing is identifying what you want to trade and what you want to get and how you're gonna get it. If you can conquer those, you're gonna be very well off. One of the big weaknesses of my out of the park baseball eighteen series with the Indians is that I wasn't making smart trades. I was getting obsessed with certain players. I extended Francisco Lindor far longer than I should have. I made mistakes. If you're good at contracts and good at trades, you will succeed more often than not in OTP. Trades are up to you and how you play the game. Contracts you will only get with practice. You need to know, what am I willing to pay for a given position? Will this player accept it? And that's it. That's really the heart and soul of trading. It's not that hard. It's about putting the time in and identifying in advance what you want. Um, if you want to take it a step further, you get a pad and a pen... And you write down every offer you get. And that way you can compare individual offers. There's a chance if I would have spent even more time, I could have gotten something better than the package I got from the Rangers. Maybe someone else could offer me like five-star five, five star pitching prospects. I doubt they would. Um, but they might have. So I think that about wraps it up for the tutorial series. I will add one final point. It's a very subtle point. But it's an important one to make. Let's look at the finances. Do not undersell putting money in the scouting budget and putting money in the development budget. Scouting budget, make sure that your players are accurate, that the ratings you're getting are good ratings. The development budget, make sure that players uh, improve faster. It's a really good idea to spend money doing that. Really good idea. 
Um, okay. Um, if you click on, if you click on, like, scouting budget, it tells you what the league baseline is. You almost never want to spend less than the league baseline. Um, this is entirely your call. Um, different strategies can be successful here, and it's entirely how you want to break it up. Amateur scouting is for the draft. I tend to put quite a bit in the draft. Um, but minor league scouting smart, too, because that means you'll make better trades. Major league scouting, ratings are less important because you'll have statistical histories to back up your decisions on. That you know will be solid. So you can change your sliders as you see fit. Um, player development budget, again. Try not to spend less than the league baseline. If you have to, do it. But try to spend at least the league baseline. This is a de this is a very attractive way to say, oh, I'm going to cut my player development budget and buy more free agents with it. It's a silly use of your money. Really silly use of your money. And that's it for trading. Um, so I hope you guys have found the overall the, the tutorial series very helpful. If you have, um, a like would not go amiss. Um, please uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, beginning next week, we'll resume the St. Louis Brown series. Um, but I've got some other ideas for future series. I'd like to do a fictional league. Now that someone's planted that an idea in my head, I'd like to do the World Baseball Classic. Um, I'd also like to do a promotion relegation league. Maybe kill two birds with one stone, do a promotion relegation league with fictional players. And start with a fantasy draft. Oh, that sounds like fun. Maybe we'll do that. But that'll be uh, that'll be down the road a bit. I want to keep playing with the Browns a little bit longer and see if we can... Uh... It eats at my craw with that series that I've only ever won two World Series titles. And they were both prior to... They were both with the team I inherited. I like building good teams, and I haven't really accomplished that yet. But we'll have to see what happens as, as we continue with that. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed the series. If you have, you know what to do. Um, do comment down below if there's still something I haven't talked about or something you're not clear on. Um, very important for me to get that feedback from you so I know what you want to see in the future. If I just to do a quick hit, a quick five or ten minute video on a particular topic and that's something you'd be interested in seeing again let me know but for now that's it and this has been a vindian and i bid you good day